if the market loves okay the data coming out of election night the dow is going to be up 500 to 1000 points tomorrow so what happens it destroys your setup that you're watching for tonight if the market doesn't like the results from the election night tomorrow what's going to happen the market welcome to access a trader the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Let the games begin. Guys, good evening, everybody. Welcome to a special election night, 2020 of the AccessToTrader.com. Uh, nightly update. Hope everybody is ready. Hope everybody uh, voted. Hope everybody has, um, you know, a little bit of luck on their side. Because again, the next four years is not going to be, um, you know, a one, two, three scenario. It won't, It will be a long, um, long stretched out process if we are in the wrong hands. Now, again, you can turn around and say Trump is, in, is the wrong hands. You can turn around and say Biden's in the wrong hands. Whatever your candidate is, whoever your allegiance is, again, may God bless you. May God bless all of us. So today will be a very big night. Um, there is going to be a lot of confusion. I guarantee you that. There's going to be a lot of noise, uh, projections all over the place. And the one thing that you will see tonight, uh, if you do stay up, I won't stay up, you know, I'm going to sleep regular time because tomorrow is another trading session, but you're going to see a lot of movement in the cash overnight futures just because, again, we don't know uh, who the president's going to be. Again, the market, you can make an argument, the market is uh, basing in an idea that Biden is going to win. Uh, you saw a lot of big moves in the pot stocks recently, the energy names, whatever the case may be. But again, we don't know. We, we never know. Uh, everybody was predicting uh, Hillary, every single poll was predicting Hillary. And next thing you know, Trump won the election. So we, we don't know until everything is on the table and all the votes uh, are casted. But again, uh, don't drive yourself crazy trying to watch the futures, trying to figure things out. Um, get yourself a good night's sleep tonight. Because again, starting tomorrow basically is the next four years uh, of our life. The one thing that I'm, I'm actually very, very shocked about. Okay, if you guys remember on the weekend update, I thought the first two days of the week were gonna be nuts. That's all I kept on saying. Strap on your cup, your helmet, your body armor, right? Everything, your mouth guard, it's gonna be crazy. The furthest thing from crazy, okay? The absolute furthest thing from crazy. Um, we got a pretty big gap up yesterday. We held that gap up. You know, there was a little bit of turbulence throughout the middle of the day, but nothing that I was even thinking even came close. There wasn't a 500 point gap up to a 500 point decline only to close up 500 points. It was very, very uh, orderly. And we woke up this morning. Again, we got a you know pretty big gap up in anticipation on election, election day. And we kind of just kind of grinded higher, you know, sold off a little bit throughout the day, but pretty much closed uh, within 100 points of the high. So, so the idea of that was going to be some crazy, ridiculous roller coaster type of environment in the two days leading up to the election, man, completely threw a curveball. And this actually turned into a very orderly start of the week. Again, has it been easy? Of course not. There's no such thing as easy. There's never a scenario that I've ever turned around in 20 years plus and turn around and say, wow, this was easy. Okay, I've never had a trading day that I've said this was easy. I've never had a trading day that I said this was fun. It's work, right? We treat it as work. So the idea that we actually had tangible orderly events and an orderly market structure for the first two days of the week is very, very shocking. If you guys remember yesterday, predominantly uh, everything was to the downside. Amazon finally blew out. I don't use the word blow out. Finally came back into uh, rising support, really, really aggressive move. Zoom got hit yesterday. There was a lot of good value to, to the downside. Today, there was a lot of good value to the upside. And I think going into tomorrow's session, it, again, it's, it's almost to the point of what happens next. Here's the problem. If you guys remember over the weekend, or even yesterday, I forgot, I think, I think it was yesterday on the video, I said, if you go through charts tonight, you're gonna see a big mess, okay? And there was a big mess last night. If you went through the charts and you kind of saw that, what saved us this morning was the big gap up. So now when you're doing your chart work tonight, 
you're going to turn around and say, wow, look how many really good setups we have. And you would be absolutely correct. Here's the problem. Again, I, again, I don't trade with uh, rose-colored glasses on. I, you know, I, again, I, I trade eyes wide open. I'm always playing devil's advocate. I'm always thinking worst case scenario. I'm always thinking what will happen if, 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 if this happens, if a meter hits the earth, what's our next play? And the most amazing part is when you go through your charts tonight, you're going to see the same thing that I've seen uh, now for the last you know, 15, 20 minutes of kind of doing my research for tomorrow. And we started talking about this uh, in, the, in the live webinar uh, about a couple of hours ago. Stocks look great for today, for tomorrow, right? They look absolutely phenomenal. Here's the problem. The Dow is up 1,000 points in 24 hours, right? 1,000 points in 24 hours. It's basically saying to yourself, if, would you buy a $10 stock that just went from a dollar to 10 today, right? Probably not. Stock would be a little bit overextended. There was a lot of work and people, quote unquote, are chasing. They have the FOMO. Well, we kind of have the same scenario. The Dow is up 1,000 points in two sessions. And everything that finally got into supply that needs to be confirmed tomorrow had really, really big runs. So what the hell do we do? Seriously, what the hell do we do? It's, not, it's, 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 it's a rhetorical question, but at the same time, it's a very, very adult-like, thought-provoking question. The market already had its big run into the election, right? And now if you look at the NASDAQ 100, it reclaimed the five-day moving average. So it went literally from 267 support on the queues that we talked about, reclaimed the five-day moving average, and had a move all the way up to 277. So you had a $10 move uh, in the queues in the last 24 hours. You see what the problem is right now, right guys? There's two things happening. Number one, when stock or anything, right? goes has a really really big move an exaggerated move in 24 hours on an event up on an up and coming event it's like you know, just remember go back into a couple of weeks right we had the iphone event what happened in the iphone event you know after the iphone event they sold it tesla battery day what happened in the tesla battery day they you know they ran it up the event came they sold it amazon prime day we love it amazon prime amazon prime they ran it up amazon prime started they sold it, okay? So that's kind of what's on the table. We're, we're literally on the table of, well, what happens if the market doesn't like the outcome, right? And, and again, we don't know what that outcome is. We're, we're not saying, I'm not saying it's gonna be Biden. I'm not saying it's gonna be Trump. I'm speaking from the market participants point of view, okay? Whoever your candidate is, it's great. I'm pulling for your candidate. Hope everything works out, right? Hope in the next four years of your life, is healthy, happy, lucrative, but more important, above ground, right? We say that all the time. But our problem is too much, too fast, too, you know, too, too quick into an event. That's our problem. And if you look at where we're looking at the market right now, okay, we are right into supply. So for the bulls to really have a fighting chance, we need a big gap up, right? Because again, you can't have a little gap up tomorrow or a, you know, kind of a flat open tomorrow because look how much supply there is, right? All these spaghetti lines that a lot of new traders ask me, hey, Dan, what's, how come you have so many lines in your charts? No reason, right? Just to make myself look smart, right? You see all the supply guys? You see all these trees in the forest? So organically, we would have to fight through all these trees just to get it reclaimed the 50-day moving average above 280. So that is a lot of work. You're talking about another five points. The problem also is when you're charting tonight with all these beautiful charts that you found and you should be charting every single night, right? What's going to happen is if the market loves, okay, the data coming out of election night, the Dow is going to be up 500 to 1,000 points tomorrow. So what happens? It destroys your setup that you're watching for tonight. If the market doesn't like the results, from the election night tomorrow. What's gonna happen? The market's gonna sell off 500 to 1,000 points because we just had a 1,000 point run up in 24 hours. So ironically, this is probably the only night. And again, I do have, you know, I do have some longs and shorts that I'm watching. You know, Tesla looked great today. We'll get to the pivots in a second. You know, Tesla looked great today. Uh, DraftKings is coming out, uh, coming out of a bottom, trying to reclaim the five day moving average. Uh, Pinterest is starting to, uh, Pinterest needs to reclaim this two area to go back. So there's definitely setups, okay? So I, I, you know, I don't want to turn around today and say, you know, you shouldn't chart, you should always chart. But the problem is, 
if Pinterest, right, if the futures are up 500 to 1,000 points, Pinterest is going to be up a five to seven dollars. So the futures are up 500 to 1,000 points. Tesla is going to be up 15 to 20 points. So unless you're long into the election night, you're not going to take advantage, unfortunately, of your research. So going into tomorrow's session, everything is on the table. Okay, legitimately, uh, everything is on the table. Everything matters. Uh, all the data that we've been kind of watching and trying to break down, it's all going to be in the value of the next four years to see exactly who uh, the next president of the United States is. And I think going into tomorrow's session, you really need to kind of be open-minded. As great as the market looked in the last 24 hours, as easily they could pull the plug on the market back and take it back to the lows. And again, I'm not trying to forecast. I'm not trying to scare anybody. This is, these are just hard facts, okay? I think one of the one of the, the, the major takeaways from being a trader or just being an adult, right, is to kind of take all the information, process it, and make a good decision based on uh, the information you have. So, the, you know, these are the hard data. You know, this is the hard data. Uh, 267, uh, 267 to 277 in two days on the Qs, 1,000 point in the Dow. We have all the supply here. Your research might be out, you know, might might be out the window in the next couple of hours, and again tomorrow might actually be uh, the circus that we discussed. So again, crazy market uh, potential for tomorrow's session. But again, this is everything you signed up for the first day you opened up your brokerage account. And again, I don't care if you're a part-time trader, a full-time trader. We're all going to be thrown in this wonderful whirlwind of the election aftermath. So again, buyer or seller, beware for tomorrow. So let's talk about today's pivots. Uh, again, I was basically in cash flow mode today. Um, some pretty good pivots today to the upside. And one that we missed on the second entry, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. So Zoom was a little disappointed today. I, I'll be honest with you. I, I was a little bit disappointed in Zoom today. Um, so here is the pre-market. Actually, let me just kind of walk you through, through my thinking. So Zoom the other day held that um, 446 level on the 50-day moving average and reclaimed it, okay? If you look at the 60-minute view, right? This was the 60-minute view. It gapped up into supply, right? Gapped up into supply and it put in a high roughly around the 460 area. So we had this whole supply zone and if the market would have rallied and everything would have been good and there's buyers that have came in, my whole thing is they reclaimed the five day moving, uh, 50 day moving average. They opened up red to green. They reclaimed the red to green. And now if they take out the opening range high, we should get at least a 10 to 12 point spike. The problem is sometimes, again, you don't get that. And this was a kind of an odd trade. So I got long on, on the 460 break. It only ran up a little, little bit, literally less than $2. Um, I saw it stalled out. I was kind of in, in, in cash flow mode to begin with. So I made some sales. And again, very, very small move. It wasn't a big move whatsoever. And again, I, like I've always said, especially in times of, um, times of uh, kind of uncertainty, I've always said, you know, expect the unexpected. Anything you trade today, make sure it's for cash flow. Okay, that's very, very specific instructions, uh, especially on the long side. Use second entries on everything and take along the way. Break even on all runners. Stay patient. Again, today's a game of chess. And that's exactly what I did on, on ZM. So it spiked up. It stalled out a little bit. I sold some for cash flow. Used break even on the balance. I got stopped out break even on the balance. And then the stock sold off 10 points. And, and I just didn't understand why. Um, I looked at the correlated supply zones uh, on the five minute, uh, on the 15 minute, I went to the 30 minute, I just could not find uh, a reason why it sold off. But again, if you have a game plan, stick to the game plan and let things play out. Uh, SRRK, way too thin here at the open. I watched it, believe me, I watched the whole thing. Uh, 46.75, 47, it needs to build. Um, again, just so thin at the open. There's, there's no way you could have gotten any liquidity off. So here is the 46.75. Um, it traded like a buck. That's it. It traded like a buck, but it wasn't like one of those trades that it went up a dollar organically. It got there like in seconds and then completely turned around. So uh, be careful of the thin, thinner names. Um, definitely be, be, be careful of the thinner names. Uh, Netflix, nice move on Netflix. But again, I thought it, it could get to like, I personally thought it was going to get to 92. Just, just again, if you, the whole direction today was cash flow only. Uh, 49 needs to build. Again, cash flow only. Here is Netflix. 
right? So here's the 89 and it went to almost 96. So really, really big move. I thought it was going to stop right here, 92, 93 at the supply. It actually went through it. So nice move on uh, Netflix. Uh, Tesla absolutely exploded today. Uh, 409 needs to build. Again, the whole message, cash flow only. The problem was, again, I only thought there was only like three to five dollars in the trade, right? It, I said it could stretch the 412, 414. Tesla turned around and said, well, yeah, Dan, that's great. That's great of your, uh, you know, your little, your little lines. So, right, that's great of all your lines. I thought it was going to stop right here. It exploded through this channel here at 409 and went all the way up to 427. Ironically, now it actually looks really, really good. So big, big move. You wrote a runner there, guys. Congratulations. Again, uh, sometimes they do go through supply, but again, it's a good problem to have uh, if you are holding a runner. Um, so here is where things got a little funky. So Roku was weak, right? Roku was weak. It took out 205 and put in an initial low of 204.50 and then rallied back, right? So that's the 204.50 would have been second entry. And then all of a sudden, we forget about the damn thing. And then all of a sudden, you see a PR, Walmart and, who the hell was it? Walmart and Comcast, of all people. Walmart and Comcast going to do some sort of streaming thingy-bajiggy, whatever the hell it is. Anyway, that, apparently that affected Roku's business. And unfortunately, I just wasn't watching it close enough. And it got murdered, right? So here was the initial move. And it went all the way down to like, you know, literally 196. So big, big miss on Roku. If you did catch a good job, big, big miss. Again, here's another perfect example. 152 uh, needs to confirm. Went down about a dollar. Never gave a second entry. So again, guys, always remember uh, second entry. Uh, this was really, really good. The Amazon trade. Um, I caught a piece of this thing pretty well. Uh, Amazon 3021 needs to build. Uh, again, Big, big pivots to the downside yesterday. Here was the Amazon pivot, right? Here's the whole uh, 3021 just exploded, really went nuts, uh, went to like 3074. I thought it was going to get to 3060, uh, got to 3074. So, really big move on Amazon. Uh, yeah, take on the way up, take on the way up. Yeah, like I saw it, it was supposed to be 3060, not 3069, but anyway, it went through there as well. Um, yeah, still valid, but it stalled out. Uh, Netflix, nice move up. Uh, my little lunchtime thoughts and uh, nothing, nothing really there in the afternoon. It spiked up about a buck. But moral of the story is, look, I, I think at least now we've made it 90 percent way through Election Day. OK, we're still not out of the woods. Obviously, we need to have a decisive winner, which nobody's going to really wave their hand unless it's a, it's a landslide tonight. And I think at the end of this week, you'll finally start seeing some sort of directional confirmation bias uh, into the, the, the last part of the fourth quarter. So again, election night is here, guys. Uh, again, whoever you voted for, may the best man win. But again, the most important part about it is whoever wins tonight, right, if it's not your candidate, take it like an adult, right? You don't need to fight with anybody. People are still screaming at George Bush. George Bush hasn't been in office in 12 years, okay? Concentrate at the task at hand, okay? The past is the past. We don't live there anymore. So whoever wins tonight, they're in our hands, right? They're in our <laughs> hands. Uh, so hopefully we did choose the right candidate, whether it's Biden, whether it's the incumbent Trump. And let God be all with us because this is going to be a very interesting next four years. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow.